246 weekly webcasts. Please keep typing your questions. I want to start this week's webcast with a couple of tips on how to be more productive with AI and how to take your career to the next level using AI. So tip number one is using ChatGPT to ace our interviews or turn any weakness into a strength. And I'll show you how to do this in a second. And the best way to prepare for questions for an interview is to think about what weaknesses of ours they might ask about and how do we turn these weaknesses into a strength. Uh, every battle is won before it's been fought. So let's say that your grades were not exceptional. And the reason might be because you had to work in several part-time jobs to pay for your education. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go to ChatGPT and we're gonna turn this weakness into a strength by asking ChatGPT to give me a 50 word interview response to why my poor grades are not a weakness as I had to work multiple jobs. Let, let me type this in. And I spelled weaknesses wrong here, but it should be smart enough. During college, I faced the challenge of balancing academics with a part-time job, which was essential for my financial stability. While this impacted my grades, it also fostered resilience, time management, and a strong work ethic. These real-world skills have been invaluable, and I'm confident they will contribute significantly to my professional success. Okay, so what are other weaknesses that ChatGPT can turn into a strength when we interview? Well, another one might be that you worked at, let's say, three companies in two years, and you're worried that someone might want, not want to hire you because you might be a flight risk, meaning you might leave after a year or six months after they trained you. So let's ask ChatGPT to help us with this one. So we'll type, give me a 50-word interview response as to why I worked for three companies in two years is not a weakness in an interview. Okay, so I'm lazy, so I'm gonna copy this here. Go. Okay, so it says here, navigating through these companies has provided me with, sorry about that. Navigating through these three companies in two years has provided me with diverse experiences and a versatile skill set. The adaptability is a strength, allowing me to understand different corporate cultures. This is good. Uh, and business models quickly. Uh, I've garnered unique insights and I'm equipped to bring a well-rounded perspective and innovation, innovative solutions to your team. And what you might want to do also in that interview is mention that those companies you worked at, although you learned a lot and you contributed a lot, you weren't doing what you're passionate about. But this current company you're interviewing for or with is uh, going to require a skill set that you're more passionate about so you won't have a job, uh, you'll have a passion, so to speak. All right, for this one, I'm going to use ChatGPT 3.5. It's almost as good as ChatGPT 4. But this time, what I'm going to do is, let's say you want to work for Google, but you have no tech experience, and your experience is you were a waiter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type, give me a 50-word interview response as to why my lack of tech experience working as a waiter is not a weakness. Let's see what it says. While I may not have direct tech experience, my background as a waiter has equipped me with valuable skills. I've owned exceptional communication, adaptability, adaptability and problem-solving abilities. In today's tech-driven world, these soft skills are essential for effectively uh, collaborating with technology and providing exceptional uh, uh, customer service. And by the way, the, the way I'm clicking through these slides here that I prepared in PowerPoint is I'm clicking on these here. I've got a, a pedal down here. Next up, all right, you can even apply this uh, to a product that you're selling. For example, give me a 50 word interview response. Let me type that again. Give me a 50 word interview response. I'm lazy, I'm gonna copy and paste, look at my teleprompter here, to how my technology product and startup can compete with Microsoft, even though I have no track record. Mention my awesome customer support. Go. 
All right. While I may lack a track record, my startup can compete with Microsoft by emphasizing my exceptional customer support, our commitment to solving user issues promptly, provide yada, yada, yada. Okay. So what you can do is you can turn all of your weaknesses into strengths by using a chat GPT. Now, what I want to do is I want to take this a step further now by using a concept called system prompting or role prompting. And what this means is we start a conversation with ChatGPT by first giving our background. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to type this again. I am reading from this teleprompter. I'm not staring at you. <laughs> I'm applying to work at Google as a developer. And the only programming experience I have is through Udemy courses, which are great. Give me, oh, this is good. Give me 10 reasons why Google should hire me. Don't worry about the typos, okay? Here is my experience, okay? And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to my LinkedIn profile here. I'm just gonna copy my experience, okay? Let's say that the only experience I have are these two items here. Okay, so I'm gonna copy this here, copy. Hope this works. And I'm gonna paste it, go. Okay, oh, this is good. While my primary background lies in not-for-profit board, not -profit board roles with organizations like the Limo Foundation and providing opportunities for women, uh, there are several compelling reasons Google should consider hiring me as a developer. And here they are here, passion for learning, adaptability, problem solving, leadership, communication, teamwork, all that stuff there. Okay, you can have a lot of fun with this. Again, this is called, um, this is called role playing or system prompting where you tell ChatGPT who you are first and then ask it to respond. Okay, now I wanna move on and talk about uh, a website that uses ChatGPT called Ralph AI. So let's go there together. Ralph.ai. Okay, so what this site does is it helps you with copywriting for emails or marketing campaigns or LinkedIn posts, etc. Okay, and they're separated into a couple of, of different categories as well. You've got emails, LinkedIn content, etc. So I'm going to log in here and I'm going to make something up from scratch here. So I'm going to sign in with, with Google to my free account. Okay. And I'm gonna do um, an in-mail generator. So let's go to this tool here. Okay, the recipient's name is John Smith. The subject is, I would love to show you my product. And obviously I'm making this up on the fly here. Your company name, Dunder Mifflin, of course. I want to show you my paper product. How exciting. Okay. I sell paper machines. Okay. And the call to action is I want to show demo and I will make it short and the tone, I will make it casual. Should I use emoji? Sure. Why not? And let's generate this. Let's see what it says. Okay. You can also, this is me buying time. You can also use this product from Ralph AI here uh, to uh, write LinkedIn posts for you in articles. Just make sure, please, that you double check everything. And you, I would basically use it just for idea generation, like look at it in bullet point format and then type up your essay yourself so that there's no copyright issues. So here's what it came up with here. Okay. Hey, John Smith, subject, transform your, your paper production game. And it types all this stuff here and talks about you in more detail. And what you can do actually is you can tweak it uh, as, as well. Okay. Make it shorter and funny. I don't recommend making it funny first time you meet somebody. Okay. And then it'll tweak it. You can even get rid of emojis uh, if you want to. Okay. And the free version I think allows you to do use this like 10 or 15 times and that's it. Okay, paper problems, not anymore. Okay, it makes it kind of humorous. And again, you, you could send it uh, without emojis uh, if you want to. Okay, 
So this, this product is very intuitive to use, uh, and I really hope it helps you. Tip number three is how to use ChatGPT to help with presentations. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my website, and I'm going to copy a bunch of FAQs from one of the products that I sell here. And then I'm going to ask ChatGPT to create a presentation on this. So let me just copy a bunch of this here. I'll go all the way up to here. Okay, copy. Go to ChatGPT. We'll use four this time. Okay. Uh, and I'm going to type this. Give me 10 slides in a presentation with three bullet points per slide with this content. Paste, go. Okay. Slide one, introduction. Okay, this introduc uh, introduction to this product I'm selling. And by the way, Steve Jobs always talked about the rule of three. We can't process more than three pieces of information on a slide. So never have more than three uh, pieces of information on a slide or three images. And the best pictures in the world usually have three different layers as well. That beautiful picture of the beach uh, where you see the sky, the ocean, and the beach, et cetera. Okay, so it put it all together here. It's still generating right now. And sometimes when you do this, um, it won't work. You just have to keep resubmitting it directly to uh, chat GPT. Okay. All right. Next up, what I'm going to do is I want to talk about how to use AI tools to help with internal or external customer support on your website. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use a, a product called Chatbase, chatbase.co, I think. Yeah, here we go. Good. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to log in. I have a free account here. And what you can do is you can create a chat bot to put on your home page. And all you have to do is copy and paste contents from a book you wrote, a bunch of posts you wrote on LinkedIn, or FAQs, which is what I'm going to do right now. New chat bot. Okay. So the data source right here, I'm just going to paste what I had in the clipboard, okay, which is all those FAQs, okay. And I'm going to create a chat bot. The free version here, I have a 400,000 limit. I'm throwing in 10,000 characters. So let's create this chat bot, which is based on the FAQs I have on my website for this stuff here. Okay. And I'll ask questions about my products. Let's see if this works. Okay. Okay, great. Good. All right. So let's ask questions. Okay. What is the Haroon MBA program? And you can ask questions any way you want to as, as well. Okay. All right. Then I can ask questions like, um, I don't know, can I get a refund? Let's see if this will work. Yes, a 30-day money-back guarantee. It's unbelievable. It's, it's incredible. And what you can also do with this is you can actually um, add this directly to your website as a chat bot as, as well. It's pretty powerful stuff. Okay. Let's move on now to tip number five, which is how to use ChatGPT plugins. Okay, so let's go back here to ChatGPT. Okay, we have to be in ChatGPT4 for this. What I'm going to do actually is let me do a search on ChatGPT and start from scratch. ChatGPT, here we go. Good. All right. So you can use what are called plugins, uh, kind of like how um, with um, iOS, you can install apps to run uh, on mobile. Okay, so let's go here. And let's go to plugins here. Okay, and this is this is beta mode here. All right. And what you do is you go to the plugin store. And let me just turn this one off here. You go to the plugin store and you type the plugin you want to add. So for this uh, example here, I'm adding uh, Top Hap. So let me just uninstall it and then reinstall it here. Okay, Top Hap is similar to Zillow. Okay. This is beta technology though. Please keep that in mind. Okay. So this is like Zillow. And you can use, I think, up to three at the same time. You can use Kayak as well. So I'm going to type this. Give me a list of the 10 cheapest houses in a table format in zip code 90210. I'm dating myself there. With two bedrooms. With typos. Okay. All right, so what's going to happen in the background now is ChatGPT is going to go and open up this plugin here and try to get information from it. Okay, 
Uh, please double check the data whenever you use this stuff. This is kind of like an alpha or a beta product uh, right now. It does take a little bit of time uh, as, as well. Okay, so here's a table right here uh, of them. Uh, and you should be able to click through as well uh, to hyperlinks to these houses. Usually it throws it in. Yeah. Yeah, here's, here's the link right here. So for example, uh, 9171 West 3rd Street in Beverly Hills, three and a half million dollars. You click here to go to the link, et cetera. You guys get the idea. Okay. All right. Now, the last thing I want to do is I want to provide you with um, uh, 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 Sequoia's generative AI uh, market map. Okay. Now, Sequoia is the number one venture capital firm on the planet. And any technologies they invest in usually outperform relative to other VC firms. So let's do a search together. Okay. Sequoia. Okay, if you're watching replay of this, 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 this might be updated to a newer, newer version of what I'm about to show you. So let's do a search on Sequoia's, I'm looking here at teleprompter, generative AI market map. Generative AI market map. Okay, here it is here. All right, so this here is, I think it's version three of tools uh, that they say are market leaders. So in the consumer space, you have these products here for AI. They're all pure play AI companies. In the enterprise space, you have uh, technologies in search like Glean. If you go to glean.com, it's incredible technology. I was playing around with it. And what glean.com does is it sets up Google for yourself in your organization by searching all the data sources in your company. So you can play around with this. Uh, this here is version three. They up, I think they'll probably update this every six months or so in case you work at a company and you're interested in using certain AI products uh, to beta test uh, in your sandbox, so, so to speak. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take your questions in a second. I'm gonna take a very quick break by showing you uh, my latest course. Okay, a quick trailer here. I'll, I'll be right back and, and thank you. I don't know how to say it, so I'm just gonna say it. I'm teaching a comprehensive course on Microsoft Excel. But let me tell you, Excel is a magician's hat that pulls out solutions to problems you never thought possible. As a former beta tester wizard for Microsoft, I've created more spreadsheets than stars in the sky. Come with me on a journey that will blow your mind. We're going back to a time when accounting was done with, well, uh, sand. This is 5,000 years ago when the ancient Mesopotamians ruled the world and clay tablets were the ultimate tech. They invented writing and spreadsheets before spreadsheets even existed. With wedge-shaped writing called cuneiform pressed into clay tablets, they tracked their trades, taxes, and loans like it was nobody's business. Ugh! I think I'll add new shoes to the miscellaneous expenses column. And then came the paper ledger, the smartphone of the Middle Ages. The first tech revolution that changed the game for accountants and merchants everywhere. It allowed them to record several hundred financial transactions per day, a step up from clay tablets. seemed like spreadsheets had hit the limits. A new technology emerged. Computers with raw power at your fingertips. Programs like VisiCalc and Lotus 123 allowed for thousands of calculations per day. But with great power comes great responsibility. The undo function was yet to be invented. And today, Excel can do billions of calculations per day. So next time you open up the app, remember the journey it took to get here. And who knows where we'll go from here. 
Join me and unlock your full potential to wield thousands of years of history like a true wizard. All right, first question I've got here is from Eric, uh, who wrote, uh, looking forward to the session and happy to share more about James the Rockstar, a personal growth AI assistant. Awesome. Uh, so uh, Eric, if you want, what you can do is after answer all the questions today, uh, we can do a Zoom with you right now and you can show everybody what you did. Now, Eric is uh, my first MBA student that ever wrote a book. Uh, and he published it in, I think it was uh, early January of 2020. It was called Awesome Ego Trip. And what he's done, this is really cool, is he copied the whole book into chatbase.co, which is the, the website I showed you a couple minutes ago. And he created a chatbot based on it. So I'll tell you what, uh, after I answer questions first, come on to Zoom. And the way to get the Zoom address is go to harunmba.com slash Zoom, all lowercase. Okay, let me get through the answer, the questions first here, uh, and I'll bring you on, and thank you for that. Okay, next up, uh, I've got Ray. Hey, Ray, who wrote, uh, hey, Chris, uh, thanks for always being here. Thanks for being here as well. I appreciate it. A couple of questions. Number one, which industries do you expect will grow uh, in the future? Uh, what about healthcare? Yeah. And then number two is, what is the name of the brand of vitamins you take from Ray Kurzweil? Uh, yeah. So whenever I look at industries, I always ask myself um, a very basic question. What sectors and companies and technologies are will be more relevant in 10 years than they are today? And for now, uh, everybody is talking about AI. Um, it's near and dear to my heart, which is why I, I kicked off this call with, it, with a, a quick session on AI. So I would look closely at AI and AI-related companies. Now, if you want a list of companies that are exposed to AI, just rewind a couple of minutes and look at that Sequoia graphic that I shared with you. Uh, in terms of publicly traded companies, uh, there's plenty of ETFs to invest in, in, in AI. The largest component of most of these ETFs, though, is NVIDIA chip company, ticker NVDA. Yeah. And I would also look at what sectors have not been disrupted yet uh, by technology. Right. So, you know, Uber has certainly disrupted the taxi industry. But there's other industries where software has not disrupted yet. Okay. All right. Uh, next up, uh, 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 what about healthcare? Yeah. So what I'm seeing here in the San Francisco Bay Area where I live is a ton of money is going into these two sectors. Number one, AI. Number two, healthcare. Specifically, biotechs, especially after the pandemic uh, in 2020 and 2021. So here in South San Francisco, which is the biotech capital of the United States, there's a ton of companies that are raising money for life extension reasons, which is a good segue into your next question, which is, what is the name of the brand of vitamins you take from Ray Kurzweil? Yeah, so Ray Kurzweil, um, he was the uh, director of engineering uh, at, at, um, at Google, uh, and he has these products, uh, and, and I take one of them. It's called um, Anti-Aging Multipack. Uh, the, the brand name is Ray and Terry. His partner is Terry. Do a search on Ray and Terry. And what this is, uh, this vitamins, and I take a ton of vitamins, ton of supplements. I'm not sponsored by anybody, please. I never will be. I don't want to be. But I take a ton of vitamins and supplements, and I'm sure a lot of what I take uh, are placebos. Um, but what's in here, the most important one is resveratrol, uh, which you can find in red wine uh, as, as well, which, which helps with life uh, extension. Uh, you can't reverse aging, but you can certainly slow it down. Okay. All right, next question is, gold is expensive. Yeah, it's near an all-time high, close to $2,000. Uh, housing is expensive. The S&P 500 is expensive. What is the undervalued sector currently? Yeah, so this year, uh, the NASDAQ is up 26%, uh, which is outperforming non-tech stocks. Uh, and so uh, value companies, value stocks have underperformed growth. So you might see a sector rotation from that perspective a little bit of mean reversion as portfolio managers try to chase performance uh, into year end. Now, what I'm going to do, this will be fun, is instead of using ChatGPT, I'm going to use Bard by Google, and I'm also going to use Bing Chat to look at the, the worst performing sectors uh, this year. Okay, so give me one second to, to tee this up. And what I'll do is first I'll use Bing Chat. Now, to use Bing Chat, you have to use the Microsoft uh, Edge browser, uh, which I've got right here. So I will ask this, and, and I prefer this to ChatGPT because with Bing Chat, as you'll see in a second, you actually get real-time sources of the data. So what are 
the worst performing sectors in the S&P this year. Okay. And even though I have typos, it's still going to work. Okay. So here it is here. The financial sector is, is down, I guess, because rates are increasing. Energy is down, just mean reversion because energy did quite well last year. Uh, and so here are the sources here, Forbes uh, and, and these publications here. Let's do the exact same thing right now for stocks that have performed poorly this year. But this time what I'm going to do is I will use, uh, I'll use BART, uh, which is made by Google. Now, if you're trying this yourself, you might find it doesn't work for you because BARD and Bing, uh, Bing Chat, are not available in every country yet, partially because of privacy reasons. Let's try BARD right now. Okay, BARD Chat. What are the worst performing stocks in S&P this year put in a table? with typos, it'll, it'll still work. And the reason I'm not using ChatGPT for this is because ChatGPT uh, only has data uh, as of uh, January of 2022. Okay, so I, I think that BARD has got the coolest interface. This is Google's uh, version of ChatGPT, their competing product. It's got the coolest interface, uh, but it's not as good as, as Bing Chat. Yeah, yeah, and also it doesn't show you the sources. It really should. But what I like about this is you can export this to Sheets. Okay, all right, let me get back on track here. And I screwed up the uh, the, the green screen here a bit because I, I had this here, uh, this blue light spilling over. Um, so I've been doing this for five years now. I still make a lot of mistakes. All right, okay. Um, all right, uh, next up, uh, Eric wrote, hello, Prof. Chris, hope all is well. Thank you for creating the AI course. Uh, it's wonderful. I appreciate that. Thank you. And hats off goes to uh, Luca Anison, uh, who I made that course with, the Complete Artificial Intelligence course. And what I'm working on right now really hard is I'm working on creating a complete Python course. And Luca Anison is going to fly in from Serbia to my house again. He's going to stay with me for about a month. And we're going to create that course for all of you. I hope to get it done by the end of this year. And I hope you enjoy it. And for those in the MBA program, it'll be added as a free elective, of course. All right. Uh, next up, I've got um, Shashar, who wrote, uh, hi, Chris. Hey, how are you? Good, good to see you. Uh, Ted, great to see you. Good morning as well. Kevin from Florida, always good to see you. Uh, Alexander uh, wrote, good morning from Red Deer, Canada. Awesome. My, my people, I'm Canadian as, as well. Great to see you. Tough loss last night for the Blue Jays. We got to win one or two more games to make the playoffs uh, in the next week. Okay. All right. Um, uh, Bakari, uh, great to see you. One of my MBA students, uh, Bakari played uh, professional basketball uh, in the NCAA, NCAA. He's six foot 11. He had a full scholarship to the University of Minnesota. Good to see you. Okay. Uh, and I've got Farzan, who's also from Canada, Edmonton, I think, who wrote, good morning, Chris. Looking forward to the session today. Thanks for the wonderful learning opportunity as always. Thank you. It's great to see you. I know you sent me an email yesterday. I'll respond to it soon. I promise you. Lots of love. Okay, uh, moving on to uh, Anna Reg. Uh, it's been a while. Uh, good to see you. Uh, you wrote, uh, what was the reason for the collapse of Credit Suisse? Yeah, so there, there's a couple of scandals uh, that they had. Uh, one of them was exposure to uh, a United States-based hedge fund called Archegos, Archegos uh, and also exposure to a UK-based uh, investment firm called uh, Greensill. Um, and then you had a massive run on the bank uh, and the Swiss government rescued it and UBS uh, owns those assets now. Now, it's fascinating because as I look at Silicon Valley Bank, uh, and we all know that Silicon Valley Bank went belly up uh, la last year. Um, in the past, when we've had runs on the banks, people would have to line up to get their money out of the bank. And actually in 2008, when we were within 24 hours of bank machines not working, there were some, apparently, some crooked hedge funds that hired actors to line up at banks, at smaller banks in New York City that they were short. The difference today though is with mobile, we can all take all of our money out immediately. So it's much, much faster, these runs on a bank. And that is exactly what happened with Silicon Valley Bank. Yeah, it didn't have to happen. It was, it was unfortunate because I thought it was a great company. Okay. All right, next up, uh, Michael. Hey, Michael. Uh, good evening, Chris. Good to see you. Uh, is it a common advice that during a gold rush, one should sell shovels 
Um, how does that translate to the AI gold rush that we are in? Yeah, a great question. I remember back uh, in the 1990s um, in Internet Bubble 1.0, uh, my best investments were the companies that made the plumbing for the Internet. You know, plumbing companies like Cisco, ticker CSCO. So when it comes to this gold rush and you're referring to pixels and shovels, uh, which is what people made most money on uh, back in 1849 uh, during the first gold rush here in San Francisco. For this gold rush for AI, uh, semiconductor companies are probably the best investments, particularly ones that are exposed uh, to GPUs, uh, such as uh, NVIDIA, for example, which has run up a lot. If you want to look at other companies that are exposed to the AI gold rush, what you can do is rewind about 10 minutes and take a look at that Sequoia slide uh, that I showed you, that Sequoia graphic uh, from their website. Okay. All right. Next up, we have Pulaski. Great to see you. You wrote, uh, hey, Chris, how are you? Uh, I'm great. Thanks. I'm always good. Uh, do you have any tips for dealing with, with a breakup? Yeah, I'm so, sorry to hear that. Uh, you wrote, I'm going through a tough time. Also, sorry for bringing negative vibe uh, to the webcast. I, I've been there, man. Oh, boy. Uh, the first time it happens to you, it, it hurts a lot. Uh, and then after that, you're like Teflon. It doesn't hurt as much. So I promise you it gets better. What I would say, and I've gone through it before, um, is try to stay busy to take your mind off stuff. You know, like binge watch Netflix, go out with your buddies, etc. Don't bring uh, that person's name up at all. Uh, and eventually, I don't talk about it with your friends and it will pass. I promise you. I promise you. Yeah. And, and stick around because later on during this webcast, what I'll do is I'll show you a, a short blog I made on how to take your networking and dating game to the next level uh, using a, a concept called the network network match equation I created uh, years ago. Okay, but I'll I'll do that after I'll I'll play that video after I answer questions and after I interview Eric. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, next up, uh, Pride Pride uh, wrote, uh, "Hi Chris, uh, any secrets for invoicing? How do you write a good invoice? Any websites with nice formats? Thank you as always. Yeah. So there, there's two sources uh, I would go to. One is Canva. And the other one is Zoho. Those are great consumer apps. If you work in a mid-tier company, you probably have a cloud-based software like NetSuite installed. If you work at a larger company, the invoicing software is part of SAP or Oracle, et cetera. Okay, those are ERPs. And I can go into more detail on that if you want to. You can also try experimenting with ChatGPT and ask ChatGPT to make an invoice for you as well. Okay. Uh, oh, one more thing. You can also use Excel. So in Excel, you can go to File New if you use Excel. And uh, you can search for invoice. Uh, and there's a template there I've used before. Yeah. Then you can save it as a PDF and send it to your customer. All right. Um, all right. Um, uh, and then Michael wrote, your Excel course trailer is top notch. Thank you for that. I appreciate it. And kudos to uh, Adad uh, Warda who did a great job uh, making that. Yeah, we had so much fun doing that, man. Yeah. All right, next up, I've got Caroline uh, from France who lives in Ontario who wrote, good morning, Chris. I'm looking forward to chatting with you during our weekly Zoom call today at 10 a.m. for Silver MBA students. And for those of you in the Silver MBA program, go to, and to learn more, you can go to, about that, go, just go to harunmba.com. But for those of you in the Silver MBA program, you can just go to the first lecture of the curriculum to get the weekly webcast link for the 10 a.m. Uh, Zoom, uh, which is in an hour and a half. Okay, moving on. I have got here. I've got lots of energy today, man. I feel good. Uh, next up, Abdul Aziz. Great to see you. We wrote, good morning, Chris. Uh, thank you for uh, taking us uh, through the wonderful AI uh, cheats. Uh, my, my pleasure. This was fun. Uh, what about the records of these private prompts? Uh, are they safe from hacking? Should I delete uh, each time? Thanks. Yeah, it is an issue. And um, most large corporations, um, so 85% of S&P 500 companies uh, use AI and ChatGPT, but their compliance departments internally are terrified of this, uh, and they warn all their employees over and over and over again, don't leave any sensitive data up there. And so I would do the same thing. I'd be very, very careful uh, with this. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Just be careful. Kind of like when I, when I use TikTok. Um, I use a different account, and I use a VPN quite often as well uh, when, when I do that. Never enter any sensitive information into ChatGPT. Yeah. Now, what's happened for, for big corporates is uh, uh, ChatGPT Enterprise was announced a, a couple of weeks ago, and Bing Chat Enterprise was also announced about six weeks ago. 
And what this means is those two companies have enterprise uh, uh, products with, with, with high-end security uh, that they're going to be deploying and selling to large corporates so that the data can be secure. Yeah. But when you use these products quite often, um, it's, it's, it's located up in the cloud somewhere. Yeah. So, um, and what I did was I actually emailed uh, Ralph.ai and I asked them, where's this data stored? And they said it's stored on AWS and Google Compute on the East Coast. Yeah, so you got to be careful there. Okay, next up I have got here. Um, okay, uh, I've got uh, Nawazish uh, who wrote, uh, hey, Chris, uh, hey, are you doing something with data science or are you making uh, any courses? Yeah, absolutely. So. Um, I've got uh, the complete uh, Python course, uh, which, which is coming out uh, later this year. Uh, as part of that, what we're going to be doing, uh, Luca, Anderson, and I, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be showing you how to use uh, Excel and Python. So uh, Microsoft announced that Excel works with Python now. And if you want to try it out, um, you have to download a beta version of Excel on Windows only for now. And then you type equals PY. And that will uh, give you an instance of Python. And you can put in uh, uh, tables, et cetera. It's pretty cool. And I'll teach all about that uh, in the upcoming uh, Python course. And thank you. Yeah. Okay. Um, and, and that's where I'm taking my, my MBA degree program as well. Uh, I'm going to be adding just a ton of tech electives uh, uh, to it uh, over the next 6 to 12 months. I'm working very hard on this, and I'm loving every second of it, too. And I'm trying to teach uh, with with lego blocks as well it's it's going to be a lot of fun look for that in a couple of months okay let me move on to um all right somebody said the microphone is very low i think it's because i stepped back sorry um if there's still issues with the microphone let me know and and what i can do is crank it up let me actually try to crank it up right now a bit check 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 i think that's better if if it's not uh let, let me know please and thank you okay Okay. Um, uh, Maria wrote great information. Thank you. A DF wrote very cool trailer on Excel. I have the course. Thank you for that. I appreciate it. Okay. All right. Um, uh, next up, uh, Michael uh, wrote OpenAI just announced that ChatGPT is uh, getting connected uh, to the internet. Plus, users are are getting the rollout uh, uh, first. Um, so I. Yeah, I, I'm not not sure you mean by that. I'm so sorry, uh, but but I I do know that um, uh, that uh, ChatGPT's parent company, OpenAI, uh, just announced the release of Dolly Three, uh, which is an incredible animation product, uh, which will make it more intuitive and just as good, if not better, than Mid Journey. And I can go into more detail on that uh, if you want me to. I think the killer app, though, for for AI from a consumer perspective, is tying it into um, audio, and Alexa. That's the, the, the Amazon product um, uh, is going to be releasing something like that shortly. So you can have conversations uh, with ALEXA. Yeah. All right. Um, and what I'm going to do now, uh, Eric, is I'm going to open up uh, Zoom uh, right now. And if anybody else wants to get on Zoom and ask questions, uh, feel free. So let me go over here. And the way to do it is you go to haroonmba.com slash Zoom, all lowercase. Okay, that's zoom all lowercase, and then you click uh, right here. So let me uh, open this up here, and, and I'll wait for Eric to join. And as I wait for Eric to join, what I'll do is I'll take other questions uh, from all of you uh, as, as well. Let me go here. Okay. Oh, there he is. He's there. Awesome. Okay, let's go to Eric right now. Nicely done. Thank you. All right. And let me get rid of myself in the, in the corner. Give me one second, buddy. There's two Chris's in the corner. It's too many Chris's. All right, give me one second. I'm using Wirecast software to do this. Okay, here we go. All right, great. So we'll kick it off with Eric, and then Mohammed, I'll let you uh, in, in in a minute. Eric, how are you? I'm great. Uh, great, Chris. Excellent. Good to see you again. Yeah, great, great to see you too, man. Great to see you. Um, I, it, it, I put on my... Uh... My Dutch uh, promotion. Oh, I like first. it. Nothing is impossible. The word itself says, I'm possible. Great quote from Audrey Hepburn. God bless her. I love that quote. Great to see you, man. Great to see you. Excellent. Yeah. yeah. I, I, was, I was so excited about the uh, AI course that uh -huh. you and Luca 
created. Thank you. Um, I got. I. I just wanted to try everything inside by creating, well, creating videos, uh, blending yeah. images, um, even at this point, uh, trying to create your own voice and um, have it say words and and make a video like like it's displayed. It's really fantastic. I love it. I love it. And uh, your book, uh, uh, Awesome Ego Trip, which I have, thank you. I think you 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 use chatbase.co to create a chatbot for it. Do you want to demonstrate that to us? Yeah. Let me see if I can yeah, to, share my yeah. screen. Yeah. Because I'm yeah I'm yeah. sharing I'm going to share my screen. Awesome. And, and while you do that, I'll I'll tee it up here for for everybody. So what Eric did was he he wrote a book. And he uploaded the entire book. He copied and pasted it in a chatbase.co. Uh, and then what, what happens is you can ask any questions you want to, uh, and it will answer every question based on the text uh, of your book. So what I could do if I wanted to is I could I could upload one of my books, uh, and then the whole thing will be indexed. You can ask any questions you, you want to. And big companies use chatbase.co uh, uh, for customer services uh, reasons. Okay. Oops. All right, let's see what you got here, bud. Yeah, so I, I put it on the on the website as a as a demo. Uh -huh. So on my website, um, ericvandergraaf.com. Uh -huh. This is just the introduction. Very but cool. On this right lower side, you can see the chat. Ha. Huh. So you can see, hi, I'm James, personal growth rockstar coach. How may I help you? And if you click here, uh huh, you can ask questions. It's open. Can you do me? Can you, you can do me? Ask a, questions. Can you do me a favor? Can you provide me with the link right now, and I'll share my screen. I'll try it out here. How's how's that? Yeah. I'll copy in the. Uh, okay. In the great. Chat. So I will share my my, my desktop chat. here. Okay, great. And, and you put it in chat. You wrote right. Okay. And anybody else that wants to join this call, uh, just go to haroonmba.com slash Zoom, and I'll let other people in, in in a minute. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try this this out. Okay. So I'm going to go to the bottom right-hand corner and use chat base for this. Yeah? Okay. Yep. And what I'll do is I will type, uh, okay, um, how do I get more energy? Amazing. And it goes right to Eric's book and it pulls all this directly out of his book. And you can ask questions any way you want to. Uh, let me try another one. Um, how do I get more confidence? And it'll answer it directly from the book. You can ask questions uh, many different ways as well. It's incredible. Yeah. And for those of you that run companies, small companies, and you have FAQs, you can use chatbase.co like Eric did here in order to, to, to have chat features uh, on, on your website. It's it's unbelievable. Eric, thank you so much for showing me that. I, I appreciate it. That's very cool. Yeah. Very cool. All right. I, I love to make it. It was fun. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you so much. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is uh, there are other people that want to get on this call. So you can stay with us here. Um, so I am going to admit people here, uh, and then you guys can ask questions uh, if you want to uh, as, as well here. So let me kick it off uh, with with Michael. And, and when you join, you, you always have to uh, unmute yourself. Sorry. Um, uh, so we'll kick it off with Michael. Michael, tell us a bit about yourself, where you're from, and then please let me know what your question is, and thank you. Okay, yeah. I am from Nigeria. I don't have any question, but I'll try to clarify what you said about... Um, Chat GPT. So the announcement this week was that oh. they have a version pretty much like Bing that connects to the internet, right? So there's no more limit on their data sets. You know, they used to have this limit on the training data was right. capped at 2021. Okay. But they announced this week that, you know, the new version of Chat GPT doesn't have that limitation. Yeah. Very, Thank you. very cool. Thank you for sharing that. I appreciate it. I didn't know that. So when I use ChatGPT4, 
um, I, I, I can ask like 25 questions or so, and then it stops me and puts me in the penalty box for three hours. So uh, that's a great new development. Uh, competition's a good thing for the consumer. I know that Bing Chat and Bard Chat do not have limits uh, either. Yeah, and, and by the way, ChatGPT was just valued at close to $90 billion, still a private company. They don't want to go public. Okay. All right, um, so what I'm gonna do now is, um, if anybody has questions on Zoom, just lift your hand. Um, I'm gonna put Zoom on, on mute for now, and I'm gonna go back to uh, to the webcast. And, and thank you so much. And Eric, God bless you. Thank you for, for showing us that, that demo. Uh, and also, Michael, thank you for clearing up uh, uh, the question I had about uh, ChatGPT's new, new edition. Thank you. Okay. All right. Um, Okay, um, so the question here is from Anand, which is my query is for a working employee, how many hours per day do I need uh, to dedicate to listen to podcasts uh, or books? Yeah, um, so I wouldn't think about in terms of how much time, I would think about how to work smarter, not harder. Um, so what I do and what I did this morning um, was when I was in the shower, I, I did this. Uh, Alexa, what is the Wall Street Journal news? From the Wall Street Journal. Alexa, right. Alexa, stop. So I, I listened to the news when I was getting ready today. Um, I also uh, listen to a lot of audiobooks as well. The book I'm listening to right now is incredible. It's the Elon Musk biography uh, by uh, Walter Isaacson. It, it's great. I recommend everybody listen to that book or, 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 or buy the book. I, I like Audible better because you can listen on the fly. Uh, Alexa, read my book. Getting your selection from Audible, resuming Elon Musk cost-cutting CEOs and their- Alexa, stop. It's a superb book. You guys will love it. 600 pages long. It's it's long. <clears throat> okay. Um, all right. N next up, uh, Alex P., uh, who's, who's from, from Utah, uh, wrote, uh, top of the morning, Chris. Uh, great, great to see you. Uh, you wrote, uh, if there's a government shutdown that actually does happen, does this mean all public employees will not be paid for the duration of the shutdown? Um, yeah. No, th th they'll get paid. They'll get paid. This is just- this is just posturing between Democrats and Republicans, right? Republicans are saying, hey, Democrats are spending too much. Democrats are saying, no, we need these services. Um, so it's just it's just an argument. Um, if there's a shutdown, it'll be for a nanosecond. That's it. And I don't think there's going to be impact in the economy uh, at all or the markets. Yeah. Okay. And, and keep in mind, next year is an election year as well. Okay, uh, next up, uh, DF wrote, uh, I agree with Eric about the AI chat GPT course. Thank you. Uh, you wrote, the course is a great buy. I highly recommend it to everybody. Thank you for that. Uh, and, and hats off to uh, Luca Ennison uh, for helping me to make that course uh, as well. Thank you. Okay, next up, I've got Melody who wrote, blessings to you, Chris. I uh, hope you're having a wonderful day. Thank you. G good, good to see you. Thank you. Uh, and then you wrote, I, I have the Elon Musk book. Uh, I just need to finish it. Yeah. Yeah, and I was reading another book on procrastinating, but I I, I never finished it. Yeah. Sorry. I, okay, I went 48 minutes without any dad humor. Sorry. Okay. All right, uh, next up, uh, Trader wrote here, um, hey, Chris, uh, what do you think about buying land as an NFT from Sandbox and De Decentraland? Uh, and, and what's your opinion about Metaverse? Should I, should I invest to buy land on these platforms uh, or invest in physical land. Yeah, so any asset class that you're gonna invest in, you always wanna look uh, at the supply closely. You know, my grandfather, God bless him, he used to say to me, uh, Chrissy, buy land, they're not making it anymore. So always look at supply. So I'm more bullish on real land than I am on, on NFT-based uh, land or metaverse-based uh, land. Um, if you're gonna invest in NFTs, like NFT sports cards, which, which I do, like baseball cards, Make sure you understand understand the supply dynamics uh, as, as well. Yeah. yeah. And I wouldn't put that much of your net worth into that stuff, please. And, and I always recommend that if you're going to invest in cryptocurrencies, and most of them are a scam, and you know Binance might go under now, but if you're going to invest in cryptos, never have more than 5% of your liquid net worth uh, in cryptocurrencies, and never have more than 0.5% uh, of, of your portfolio uh, in any one particular crypto, because again, I think most of them are, are, are scams. Okay, and if you guys have additional questions, uh, uh, please type them. Uh, as promised, uh, there was a question earlier uh, about um, somebody that was going through a, a tough breakup, uh, and I mentioned that I was gonna uh, show you a quick video 
on 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 how to network and think about networking uh, in terms of dating uh, as, as well. So I hope you enjoy this. I'll be right back. And again, please keep typing your questions. Thank you. I don't think you need an education from, from a, a great university to get what you want in life. I think it all comes down to networking. You want more proof? You know, Sir Richard Branson, Bill Gates, Steve Jobs, you know, these people didn't have degrees. It all comes down to networking. Relationships are always more important than product knowledge. And, and there's so many success stories of people that started in the mailroom that went on to become CEOs. Now, there's a former uh, CEO of Cosmopolitan Magazine. Another example is David Geffen. Uh, another example is Simon Cowell from American Idol. Another example is Sidney Weinberg, who was once the CEO of Goldman Sachs. Yes, he started in the mailroom. So why is it all these people get from the mailroom to the corner office, almost all of them without degrees? Because they know how to network. You know, that the, the mail dude. The mail dude might might stop by your 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 I don't know your cube or your office whatever in the morning and saying top of the morning to you. Did you see the Blue Jays beat the Yankees again? Which always happens. But they're they're friendly and they're affable uh, and, and they network that way. You know they they're just social and and that's why in almost every situation when, when I used to teach in universities during the evenings, you know my my students with the top grades would never get the best jobs or be the most successful. It was the ones that you know were kind of social. Yeah, they went out and partied and they got their stuff done as well. They didn't get the, the best grades, but, you know, getting the best grades does not guarantee success in life. Um, so the bottom line is I, I really think that you can network to get anything you want in life. You don't need a university degree to get a job at Apple anymore. You don't need a university degree to get a job at Google. You don't need a degree anymore. You know, the rules have changed. You want to learn a skill? Learn a skill online. If you want to learn how to code? and you're you're 70 years old and you always wanted to you're curious what is this coding stuff don't be intimidated dude go to udemy.com take a course from from angela Yu, uh, or, or or rob percival if you want to learn finance and accounting here i am to humbly help if i possibly can you don't need a big institution to say that you're credible anymore those barriers are gone they're gone all you need to do is have a lot of heart and be willing to fail a lot by networking a lot. You know, it's kind of like if I told you that if you were to set up 20 informational meetings with strangers using LinkedIn, using the methodologies I teach you in class, if you were to do that, then I would guarantee you get your dream job. Would you do it? Of course you would. But people don't do it for some reason. I don't know. People are inherently lazy or, or they're just too stubborn to think that the world works a different way. And what would happen with me is, is every year at my, um, when I used to teach during the evenings um, at, at MBA school or undergrad business, um, the first class I would always ask, if I told all of you that if you did 10 informational meetings over the next 10 weeks, that you would get your job, your dreams, would you do it? All 70 hands would go up. Then on the last day of class, like 10 weeks later, whatever it is, uh, I would say, okay, how many people did 10 meetings? No hands go up. How many did nine? No hands go up. How many did eight? Maybe one hand goes up. And it's always that person whose hand goes up uh, that did the eight informational meetings that becomes the most successful in life. Um, in, in all aspects of life, actually. All aspects. Uh, because they understood that they have to network and, and ask. And, and they were cool with failure and rejection. And, and if you're not cool with failure and rejection, you're never going to reach your full potential in life. You know, you only have to be right in business one time. You know, it, it, it's kind of like dating. If I told you, if you asked out 30 supermodels, um, you know, somebody that's incredibly intelligent, attractive, funny, outgoing, you know, caring, all that great stuff. If I told you, if you asked 30 supermodels out in a date and I that by the 31st, you would get the spouse of your dreams, would you do it? Of course you would. I mean, you'd say you'd do it, but would you? You got to be comfortable with failing 29 times, right? And just think of it this way. The pain of being rejected 29 times is this much. Pain, 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 pain. The pleasure of having that incredible spouse uh, for the rest of your life is this. It's so big, it doesn't even fit on the screen here. Um, so always think of it that way. It's kind of like when I invest in stocks or companies, I always think of risk reward. What's the downside? That's the risk. What's the reward? That's the upside. Reward minus risk is a positive number. Very positive. Therefore, I do the investment. You only have to be right in business one time. 
So please network aggressively. And again, you can get my networking book on my website, haroonventures.com, which it's free. Uh, it'll, it'll help you to, to figure out how to network to get anything you want in life. Okay, uh, next question I, I've got here is uh, from Melody who wrote, do you have any hobbies? Chris, I started learning how to play the recorder. I used to play a recorder too uh, uh, years ago. I was, wasn't very good. In terms of hobbies, um, uh, I do a lot of biking uh, with, with my kids. Um, I play golf sometimes, uh, not that well, uh, but I absolutely love video games. Love video games. And what I, the game I'm playing right now, because I can't find any great new games to play, is I'm playing Grand Theft Auto 4. I never got into it, but I, I absolutely love it right now. It's great. Yeah. All right. Um, next question I've got is from Shavant, who wrote, um, I want to ask, uh, how do professionals do corporate governments analysis? Uh, any tips? Yeah. Um, so a lot of companies, uh, before they hire somebody, and even after they hire people, uh, they'll hire these outsourced outsourcing firms to do background checks. And these firms will check to see... Uh, if they lied on their resume, uh, these firms will also do drug tests, et cetera. I've been drug tested plenty of times with the hedge funds uh, and, and the banks that I've worked at in the past as part of the hiring process. Yes, yeah, so they usually outsource that, that sort of thing. Um, what, what happens also is auditors will take a look uh, at the financial statements. Um, I never invest in companies that don't have a well-known auditor uh, ever. Uh, I like to go with uh, companies that are audited by the big four. And these big four firms, what they'll do when they bless the financials uh, is they will look for any inconsistencies, et cetera. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, Ted wrote, uh, what do you call a fake noodle? It's an impasta. I love it. That's how Christopher Walken says pasta. Pasta. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, next question is from DF, which is, uh, is there a way to connect AI systems like ChatGPT, BARD, or Bing GPT to other platforms like those found uh, on GitHub? Yeah, there's there's plenty of APIs you can look at. If you're interested in connecting ChatGPT or Bing Chat uh, to GitHub, what I would do is I would check out Microsoft's product, uh, uh, Copilot. Yeah. Okay. Um, next, next up. What would you recommend for mastering uh, the informational uh, meeting? Yeah, it, it takes a lot of practice, right? Uh, you know, as Tony Robbins said, uh, repetition is the mother of all, all skill. Um, and, and, and if you're a shy person, which I, I certainly used to be, uh, then you just kind of run to your fears and challenge yourself. And I remember many years ago when I worked at Accenture, uh, I would program all day long, which I loved. And then I would go to parties and I'd feel kind of nervous, man. And the only way for me to not feel nervous uh, by talking to people, socializing, whatever, uh, was to force myself to go up and talk to people, right? And don't rely on alcohol to make, you know, to make you feel more comfortable. Force yourself. Whatever your fear is in business runs your fear because I promise you uh, the fears you have, others have, are fearful of uh, as well. Run towards your fears. And eventually it'll be like second nature. And also just tell yourself, I, I just don't care what people think of me. You know, when you get up there and you present, like don't, I'm not saying be rude or disingenuous. Just be yourself because as Dr. Seuss said, everybody else is taken. Now, when you prepare for informational meetings, um, the best way to prepare is to do a background check on whoever you're going to be meeting with. And what I mean by that uh, from a due diligence perspective is you go to their LinkedIn profile just to see what you have in common with them. Or you can go to their Twitter profile to see what you have in common with them um, so that there's great icebreakers. So um, if, if I go to someone's uh, Twitter, Twitter profile and I see that they're, they're a big hockey fan, then I know what to talk about uh, in, in that meeting uh, with them. And I shouldn't say Twitter, I should say X profile. So anyway, it's, it's important to network a lot as, as well and set up tons of informational meetings because you can't get a job by just applying online for a job. Because every time you see a job opening online, your chance of getting that job are literally, literally one out of 250. So who gets that job? Well, ultimately, it's the person that knows somebody at that company. So if you want to work at Google, for example, do an advanced search in LinkedIn and find tons of people that you have something in common with that work at Google and set up those informational meetings 
And I talk about how to do that in my networking book, which you can get on my website, uh, harunmba.com. Yeah. And somebody criticized me for mentioning this too much, so I'm going to try to mention it less often now. But I want to help. Okay. Full disclosure. Eh? Okay. Uh, uh, next up, uh, Eric wrote, uh, Chris, uh, I, I want to apply AI to learning and development. Uh, is there more uh, like edX plugins? Uh, do you have any additional ideas? Thanks. Yeah. Yeah, so the plugin market right now for ChatGPT uh, is is brand new. Uh, it's not that robust right now. And the only EdTech one I know of right now is edX. And so if you want, I've done this before, you can go to uh, ChatGPT, install the edX plugin, and you can create your own curriculum. So you can ask questions after you install the plugin. I can do it if you want me to right now as well. You can ask questions like, give me a curriculum on computer science, I have no background in comp sci, teach me how to code. And it will create a bunch of courses, curriculums for you to take from great schools like Stanford, MIT, et cetera. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then uh, Michael wrote, did you get a chance to check out OpenBB, uh, which is the open source Bloomberg uh, terminal competitor? Uh, I asked you about it last week. I went to the website to download it and I couldn't download it. I think you had to pay for it. Yeah. So I haven't had a chance to check it out, but I'm very excited to check out a Bloomberg GPT when it becomes available because Bloomberg has more than 40 years worth of financial data. Um, and I think they're going to dominate uh, the AI market when it comes to financial services. Yeah. All right. Um, uh, and then uh, next up, Eric wrote, I've heard a lot about GitHub, which Microsoft owns, and it's a coding repository, right? So you can go and copy code from there, uh, for, for example, if, if you want to. Um, so that, that's what it can do. Yeah. You, you, you go there, you can copy and paste code. Uh, and, and in this, uh, uh, this, this course that Luca Anderson and I are making on, on Python, uh, what we're doing is we're going to be providing a lot of coding samples from our GitHub channel, uh, as, as well. Yeah. Okay. And Microsoft bought it several years ago. Yeah. All right. Next up trader wrote, um, how can I land my, my first job at Goldman Sachs? Uh, if I have a better understanding on technical knowledge than financial knowledge. Yeah. Yeah. Don't, don't, don't go in there talking about technical analysis uh, in your interviews. So what I would do is I would, and one of my students actually graduated last year from my platinum program. He did exactly what I'm going to tell you to do. And he got a job there working in investment banking and his start class, he was a, a, an associate uh, with, with Harvard MBA school graduates. And what he did was he networked a lot to meet people at Goldman Sachs that have a similar background or similar interest to him. So you set up just a ton of informational meetings. And if you sign up for my MBA program, just go to HaroonMBA.com. In the first semester, I teach you how to network on steroids. And so you set up tons of informational meetings. And when you go to these meetings, you have to go in with a, with a mindset of, of helping people, which is the crux of this great book, Give and Take. If you do that, if you help people in all of your meetings, then good things will happen and they'll help you. You know, give and receive is prophetic. It's true since the beginning of time. And understand when you go into informational meetings that people are usually motivated by three things. Number one, they want to make more money. Number two, they want to get promoted faster. And number three, they kind of want to enjoy what they do, work with people they, they enjoy. So what you can do in these interviews, if you want to, is you can provide one page write-ups on stock pitches. And if you want to include technical analysis, you can, but please make it the bottom of the one page stock pitch. So you'll, you'll come in with your resume and on the other side of your resume can be a stock pitch that has three sections to it. Section one, fundamental analysis on a stock. Section two, valuation. And section three, technical analysis, if at all. And you're going to come up with a target price too uh, on the stock. And you're going to keep pitching them ideas, keep sending them ideas every couple of weeks or so uh, uh, in PDF format uh, until eventually they, they, they want to meet with you again. And hopefully you, you can help them to generate alpha as well, meaning outperform the market. Uh, and all these templates, uh, when it comes to doing informational meetings, I provide you with in my MBA program. Give and you'll receive. It's prophetic. It's been true since the beginning of time. Yeah. Okay. Ted has another joke here, which is, boy, that circus fire was intense. 
I like that. That was, that was good. That was good. That's great dad humor. I'll use that with, with, with my kids. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, and in my uh, Python course, I'm also going to be using a, a lot of props to explain object-oriented programming like I did my Excel course. And if you meet me in real life, I'm a very tiny man. Okay, uh, and then, uh, Eric wrote, I I've used the edX plugin uh, for ChatGPT. It's great. It is pretty cool. Um, uh, and then Eric wrote here, Elon Musk is creating X uh, with AI. I guess that means a Twitter with, with AI. Uh, wh what are your thoughts uh, on this? Yeah, um, he's credible. I and mean, he was one of the first investors uh, in ChatGPT's parent company, OpenAI, back in 2015. Um, and, and what I like about Musk is he's very transparent. He's controversial sometimes too but he's very transparent in terms of his concerns about AI. And, and you know, it's, it's, we've seen all those movies on how uh, artificial intelligence based algorithms can, you know, destroy the world with, with Terminator uh, as well as uh, Stanley Kubrick's uh, 2001, a space odyssey uh, with that computer, how H A L. Um, and so I think that we do have to be careful. And I think that all major corporations and large governments, will all create their own department of AI ethics to keep AI in check. And that's something that Elon is very worried about, rightly so. And even Warren Buffett recently said, you know, once you open up AI's Pandora's box, there's no going back. So we really have to be careful. Yeah. Okay. Uh, next up, uh, uh, Tudor. Uh, nice to meet you. First time seeing the call. I hope you join us again. Uh, you wrote, uh, hey, Chris, uh, what would be your advice to someone who's decided to pursue an MBA program without a background uh, in such and is sort of looking to switch uh, careers? Yeah. So a, a, a typical MBA uh, costs $100,000 and you're taken out of the workforce for two years. And the reason that people should consider doing an MBA at a traditional school is if they've set up 100 informational meetings and they still can't change careers. And the reason I say that is think about how each of those 100 meetings saves you $1,000. 100 meetings times $1,000 is 100 grand. So I would only consider doing an MBA at a traditional university if you set up 100 informational meetings and you still can't change careers. Okay. Um, and if you guys, the number one uh, MBA website in the world is called Poets and Quants. And the editor-in-chief there, John Byrne, used to be the editor-in-chief of, um, uh, of Business Week. And I was interviewed uh, last week by them on my thoughts on the future of business schools and why I think that most universities are going to go bankrupt uh, in my lifetime. So you can check it out. Just go to uh, poetsandquants.com uh, and just search my name. All right. Um, all right, Eric, uh, uh, from, from Sarasota, Florida. Uh, great to see you. Eric wrote, uh, is historical data worth it? Uh, with AI, uh, will the past point to the future? Yeah, um, it, it all depends. If you have the great, a great random sample, uh, then historical data can help you. Now, everybody is thinking about the federal election coming next year. Uh, and if you look at the historical data, uh, whoever wins Ohio, the Ohio primary, which is one of the, one of the U.S. states in the middle, uh, for those international, I didn't know where it was when I moved to the states. Whoever wins Ohio usually wins the election. Um, so you have to have the right data source um, and garbage in is garbage out. Um, and you can back test all this stuff as well. Uh, like what I used to do when I worked in the hedge fund industry was I would use what's called behavioral finance to check to see when CEOs or founders of companies, historically, when they bought or sold a lot of shares in their company, what would the stock do next, meaning in the next year? And I met with Bobby Kotick, who was the CEO, founder of Activision, ticker was ATVI, which looks like Microsoft's going to be able to buy. I met with him a number of times when I worked in the hedge fund industry. And I noticed that whenever he sold shares in size, and this is all publicly disclosed, Activision massively underperformed the next year and vice versa. But you can always backtest all this data by doing a regression analysis. Uh, and, and I teach about this uh, in the AI elective. And Eric, because I think you're in my gold MBA program from last year, if you go to the very last lecture in the MBA program, this goes for everybody in all of my MBA programs, you can access the complete artificial intelligence uh, elective there, where I talk about how to do a regression analysis from scratch using Excel. And that's part of machine learning, which you can do uh, in Excel. 
Okay. Ori, how are you? Good to see you, dude. Okay. Uh, and then Eric wrote, the future and the past met in a bar last night. It was it was tense. That was good. Okay. That was good. I, I like that. Okay. I like that. Um, uh, and then Ori wrote, AI won't be in check uh, because of, of governments. Yeah. It's interesting because like a lot of students on this webcast right now, and I have students all over the world, when they try to access Google Bard or Bing Chat, they can't because some countries have, have blocked this because they haven't, they, have, they don't yet understand what the impact of AI is going to have from an ethical perspective and much, much more. Yeah. Uh, next up, uh, Michael um, wrote, uh, I read your article on poets and quants. Thank you. You wrote, it, it was great. Um, uh, and then you wrote, uh, schools uh, need to reinvent themselves or go extinct. It's true. And then you wrote, it strengthened my resolve to learn more about uh, the ed tech space. Yeah, ab absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and the whole notion of, you know, spending four years to get an undergraduate degree, um, you know, when, when you graduate with hundred grand in debt, and you have 20 hours of class per, per, you know, per week and you don't have any tangible skills to apply. That whole business model is, is antiquated. And so I think what's going to happen is in my lifetime, only 50 major universities will make it. And people will tell themselves, well, I'm only going to go and pay this massive amount of money at this university. If it's great school, great brand, like, like a Harvard uh, or, or Stanford, et cetera. And the other schools, what will happen is initially they'll deplete their endowments and then there'll be like a Hail Mary type, I don't say, save the university strategy where, where the university will call up all the alumni and donate money, um, but it, it won't last. It's just not sustainable. And the cost is ridiculous too. Okay. Um, next question is from uh, Samuel who wrote, uh, what is your opinion on option-based strategies? Yeah. So if you're going to transact in options, you know, first of all, practice for six months first. Secondly, you can buy puts or calls. Don't underwrite them, meaning don't sell them. Because when you underwrite them, what happens is your losses can be unlimited if you randomly get assigned. I can go into more detail on that. So I would only look to use options if you're long-term focused and you believe a stock has a ton of upside over a couple of years and you can buy what are called leaps, which are long-dated calls. And I would use puts if you have exposure to a stock and for some reason you don't want to sell it because you might pay higher taxes, but you're worried about your exposure. You can buy puts to protect it, kind of like an insurance contract. And for those of you in any of my MBA programs, if you go to FA44, that's finance and accounting, semester four, class number four, I have a 30 hour options elective where I teach you how to use 35 different option strategies. Yeah. Okay. All right, next up, uh, Ted wrote, Chris, please never trust atoms. They make up everything. That was good. I like that. Okay. A, a lot of great dad jokes today. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then Samuel wrote, uh, also, do you know anything about uh, Volos? From what I've heard, they provide financial indexes and technology for institutional investors. I, I've never heard of Volo until today. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, next up, Nathan wrote, can you give a more specific time for your Python course? The anticipation is killing me. Uh, yeah, thank you for that. Um, so I, I want to release it uh, by the end of this year. Uh, that, that's my target. Uh, and I have so many props that, that, that I'm using. Um, I'll show you. I've got tons of, of, of Lego characters. Um Lego characters, Lego, Lego structures. Um, we're also making a book version of it, which is going to be exclusively available to people that, that take the course. So by the end of this year, uh, and I'm trying to set a deadline date uh, of the end of this year, otherwise I'll never get it done. And Elon Musk once said, if you set a deadline of, of three months, you'll get it done in three months. If you set a deadline of three years, you'll get it done in three years. So there, I vocalized my goal. I've got to get it done. And one of my problems is that when I create courses, I, I want it to be perfect. And as Salvador Dali said, if you strive for perfection, you'll never reach it. You'll never attain it. So by the end of this year, it'll, it'll be oot. That's how we say oot in Canadian. Okay. 
Okay, and then Eileen, oh my God, it is great to see you. Uh, Eileen lives in Atlanta. She was in my first MBA class back in 2019. Uh, I met with her actually when I went to, uh, to Atlanta uh, several years ago. Uh, and she has the most beautiful last name ever, uh, which is uh, Deo Gracias, uh, which means thank God. I, I, I love it. Yeah, yeah. And she also gave me this when I met her. Um, it, and the reason she gave me this is because when I was teaching her about business analysis and whatnot, um, she did. She bought a company and she didn't realize that the company owned a horse. So she gave me this. I still have it. Thank you. Good, good to see you. So Eileen wrote, uh, I finally made it back to tuning in. It's always great to see you. You wrote, I had a, a change in my schedule. Uh, I've missed this webcast live, just watching the recordings. I hope the family is, is doing well. Everybody is great. Thanks. The kids are growing up fast, man. Uh, and, and for those of you that have young kids, by the time your, your kid is 12 years old, you've already spent 90% of the time you're ever going to spend with them. Uh, Andrew's at, at, at second year at Berkeley. He's in his last year at high school. And this guy here, this munchkin, he's 14, 14 going on 40, you know, the youngest one. Uh, but I hang out with him every day. It's so fun. We go to the gym together. Yeah. Okay. Uh, next up, uh, Ahmed wrote, uh, hey, Chris, hope all is well. Likewise, I have a question. Sure. What is your best email for partnerships? I have uh, an Inc. 5000 client that would like to do business uh, with you. Thank you so much. You can all you can always email support at haroonventures.com. I get a lot of inbounds. I tr we try our best to answer everything, but it can be tough. Thank you. Yeah. Um, but if you want, you can pitch your business idea or talk about it right right here. This is the, the best way to get a hold of me usually. Thank you. Okay, uh, next up, uh, Andras wrote, hey, Chris from Hungary, how are you? Uh, what do you think about uh, George Soros? Yeah, hun Hungarian uh, immigrant uh, came to the United States. Um, so, I, I, so I worked for a, a guy named Carson Levitt um, at, at Pequot and, and Citadel. He hired me at both companies. And, and Carson was George Soros' right-hand man. And, and I asked Carson what was it like working for, uh, for George Soros. Uh, and he told me that, Soros understands macroeconomic stuff better than individual stocks. So he's kind of more of a macro guy. And a little story here about Carson Levitt, who's my mentor in the industry. I love the guy. Um, he's why I lived here on, live here on the West Coast. Uh, Carson uh, was hired by George Soros in the summer of 1999 uh, to run his flagship fund. And that year, Soros was down 15% when the market was up a lot. And then what, what Carson Levitt did was he got the fund back to break even by December 1st of 1999. And this is all publicly disclosed. You can look it up. Uh, and then he made a billion dollars in one stock in one month. So during the month of December of 1999, he bought, he backed up the truck. He bought a ton of shares in Qualcomm. And I remember asking Carson, I was like, Carson, how did you know? How did you know to buy it? And, and he kept it simple. And, and I'm going to not do it justice, but I, but I basically asked him, how'd you do it? He's like, well, I was walking down Fifth Avenue and I saw more people walking around with these cell phone things. So I asked myself what's in them. And obviously there's much more to it than that, but he's kind of a big picture guy. Yeah. So the bottom line is that Soros is more of a, more of a macro guy uh, than a bottoms up stock guy. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and I read Soros book too. That I, I didn't understand. It was way above my pay grade. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, DF wrote, um, how will your course on Python be different from the only one offered or from the one offered by Angela Yu uh, or will the course by Angela Yu prepare me for your course? Yeah, dude, Angela Yu is the best. Um, I could never compete with her. She's great. Um, she, she's amazing. Um, okay, so my course will use my dad humor. Uh, my course will also use just a ton of props. I'm going to be teaching you uh, Python uh, using uh, Legos, you know, for, for methods, properties, and all that stuff as, as well. Uh, in terms of the setting uh, for this as well, let me see if I can show this to you. Um, what I'm going to do is I just took this down, but I'm going to have this up here in the background here hanging up. And, and what I'll do is um, I'll be sticking Legos on here and teaching it uh, using blocks. It's, it's going to be a lot of fun. It's kind of hard for me to explain, um, but 
I'll be sticking, you know, level one, and then I'll be building code uh, with Luca uh, using Lego bricks. You have to see it to understand it. And then, and then um, the, the, there's going to be four capstone projects as part of it. And the analogy we're going to be using is, is this. <laughs> it's over 9,000 pieces. And there's four smokestacks in the Titanic. So four capstone projects. So this will make a lot more sense once the course is live, hopefully by, by the end of this year. But we're going to be using just a, a ton of props uh, as, as well. It's going to be a blast. It's going to be so much fun. Yeah. So I've got just tons of Legos here. This is Mando, R2, et cetera. Yeah. It's fun. And if it's not fun for me to make a course, then it won't do well. Yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, Ori wrote, when you buy a leveraged ETF or a SPY, uh, which is the S&P 500, uh, and hedge the position with options, isn't it almost uh, risk-free? Well, it, it, it all it, it all depends because what you're what you're doing is you're kind of constructing a straddle there, right? On, on the long side, you've got a levered ETF, um, uh, at, which is massive upside exposure if if the market goes up and vice versa, obviously. Uh, and then you're hedging yourself with with the puts, for example. And with a straddle, though, um, you're you're still losing. You might be losing money though because you might have paid a lot for that put protection. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, okay. Uh, next question is uh, from Tuda, uh, who wrote, would your advice be the same if it's an online only MBA program, Chris? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so for me, what I do, because my MBA program is not accredited, and I don't believe in accreditation because I don't want to uh, alienate anybody. Uh, meaning uh, I don't want to basically only accept people that, that you know, were, were born in a rich family and have an undergraduate degree. Um, but I want to keep the cost very low. And that's my competitive edge with my MBA program. Plus you get a 30-day 100% money back guarantee. Yeah. But I always recommend learning online from home if you can. It's just much more effective. Yeah. And efficient and cheaper. Okay. Um uh, next up, Ralph wrote, uh, do you believe clean energy uh, can reach a, a $1 trillion evaluation? A absolutely one day. But one of the issues with clean tech companies is a lot of them only exist because of massive government subsidies. And a lot of venture capital firms uh, got burned in 2008 because they invested in a ton of clean tech companies, solar companies, et cetera. And what happened was in 2008, many com countries almost went bankrupt. And so countries like Spain, which had massive solar subsidies, got rid of almost all of them. And these, these companies, these clean tech companies, couldn't stand their own two feet. And they're extraordinarily CapEx intensive. But what Elon Musk has showed is that there can be a clean tech industry that can do incredibly well longer term. Um, and a lot of investors are, are voting with their feet with this, to the extent that it's actually hurting the German economy. The German economy uh, looks like they're, they're, they're in a recession this year. Uh, because he, partially because of high energy prices uh, and exposure to Eastern Europe, but also because of the transition to clean tech for the auto industry. Auto industry is the most important industry in Germany. Uh, but companies like Tesla are taking tons of share. So I really do believe that longer term, clean tech will be a trillion dollar industry. But I would only look to invest in companies that don't get material government subsidies. All right. Um, uh, next up, uh, Eileen wrote, uh, I can't believe you still you still have the horse. <laughs> I can't believe you still have the horse. Uh, I need to find my way back to San Francisco and meet with you and Fadre uh, Petras. Peter, yeah, my kids are both in college. I'm officially an empty nester. Congratulations. Yeah, it, it's such a small world because um, because Eileen grew up uh, in the Philippines. She lives in, in Georgia now. Uh, she's got a very successful company. But she grew up in the Philippines uh, with this guy uh, that is uh, my priest at my church. He's one of the priests there, uh, F Father Peter, um, who's a good dude. Yeah. 
Yeah, and definitely when you come here, we should definitely grab lunch and a coffee. But if we go out for lunch and the bill arrives, I'm going to do this. I have alligator hands. I can't find my wallet. You know, like like T-Rex. T-Rex can't do push-ups either. Yeah. I'll, I'll buy I'll buy you lunch, of course. Yeah. Okay. All right, uh, next up, uh, Customs and Exotics wrote, uh, Hey, Chris, I started your complete business plan course as I want to make one uh, for uh, a camp campground, a recreational vehicle park, and an entertainment property with mini golf, go-karts, etc. Will I be able to, uh, uh, to with your class? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, that business plan course you're taking, um, it's generic enough to apply to any company you want to start, whether it's a services-based or product-based company. And in my MBA program, I have something that's much more, that goes in a lot more detail uh, in the third semester where there's a venture capital boot camp. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then you wrote also, is there a preferred template I can use? Yeah. As part of that business plan course that it looks like you signed up for, I provide you with 50 different templates. Yeah. And if you have issues using any of them, uh, let me know, please. Thanks. And then customs wrote here, I'm Patrick. Hey, Patrick, I'll remember that. Thanks. Okay. Uh, and then a DF wrote, so you're saying that your, your Python course is similar to your chat GPT slash AI course. Yeah. It's going to be similar, but with tons more props um, and more coding, obviously, is, is, as well. Uh, but, but the look and feel we're, we're going to have is, is similar to the complete uh, um, uh, uh, AI course that Luca and I, and I made. Even the uh, even the, the the clothing, and we're starting to record it now. So with the AI course, we use these, um, and with the Python course, we're going to use these. And one of them is Luca's, the other one is mine. I'm I'm, I'm about six feet. Luca's like six foot a million. He's way taller. I have to stand on a step stool. It yeah, to teach her. Yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, Andras uh, wrote, um, have you watched the new season of Billions? Yeah, I, I have. And he wrote, sadly, I know where you're going with this, too much politics, less on finance uh, for you to analyze. Yeah, and it's so interesting because I planned on making a lot of vlogs, um, like I've done on my YouTube channel, uh, on this new season of Billions. But I can't because like, I, I only want to teach about finance stuff from the episodes. There's been like seven episodes. There hasn't been that much finance stuff. It's been more focus on politics uh, with I don't know, the, the guy that replaced Axe uh, wanting to, to run for president. Yeah. Yeah. I'm still watching it though. It's entertaining. Yeah. Oh my God. Fred Mendoza. Good to see you, buddy. Uh, you wrote, hello, Professor Chris. Uh, me and a friend had difficulty understanding the Soros book as, as well. Yeah. It's way over my head. Like I had to carry around a pocket dictionary when I tried to read it. Yeah. Yeah. The alchemy of finance. I think it was, I don't even know what alchemy means. Okay. Uh, and then at, Nathan wrote, what do you think about taking courses on trading, specifically uh, Mohsan uh, on Udemy? I know Mohsan, I met him before uh, on, at an online event at Udemy. Really, really good guy. Really good guy. Yeah. Um, so my, my, my outlook when it comes to investing is I love to invest for the long term. Um, and this is just my opinion. Um, but I think if you are a trader, uh, what happens is you make money or lose money because of random events. And so every single month has 20 weekdays, meaning 20 days the markets are open. And stocks go up and down in a short amount of time for, for random uh, events. Like it might be saber rattling between two superpowers. Or, I don't know, um, say certain semiconductor stocks can go up because the whole sector is going up. It's just, it's completely outside of your control. So I love to be long-term focused when I invest. And that way I can sleep at night and I can tell myself, I don't know the path, but I know the destination after I do a lot of due diligence, of course. Yeah. Okay. Uh, next up, uh, Ralph uh, wrote, uh, what section uh, is the venture capital boot camp in your MBA program? Yeah. Um, so whether you're in my silver, gold, or platinum MBA, it doesn't matter which one. But if you go to the third semester, specifically E3-1 through E3-5. And that means Entrepreneurship Semester 3, Class 1 through Entrepreneurship Semester 3, Class 5. And that's about 15 hours worth of venture capital boot camp stuff. Yeah. 
It's fine. Okay. Uh, and then Eileen wrote, uh, y'all, uh, Chris is the real thing. Thank you. Um, you wrote, uh, the MBA class that I took is probably the best personal investment I've, I've made. Thank you for that. I appreciate it. You wrote, I've become a better business owner with the principles that I learned. Thank you so much. And then you wrote, uh, I've become a better manager uh, and has built my business uh, to be lean and efficient machine. Oh, thank you so much for that. I, I appreciate that. God bless you. Thank you. And I love your last name, Deo Gracias. Um, uh, and then Andras wrote, um, are there people in your MBA degree program alumni who do not possess a normal bachelor's degree and have your MBA and with it manage to get serious corporate jobs or start a successful companies? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I've had people that, you know, that, that don't have a high school degree and I've had people that have graduated from top MBA schools that are Ivy League and many of them are incredibly successful. You know, I had one student raise $12 million dollars for his startup from the same venture capital firm that invested in Baidu, Twitter, and SpaceX. I've had other students that have gotten corporate jobs at Google, Salesforce, tons of companies. Yeah. yeah. But, but I really do have to, to put the caveat that, and I say this with love my heart, I can take my students to the water, but I can't force you to drink. You have to practice what I teach you, either by yourself, or with other people in the program. And everybody wants to help each other in the program as well. You can always reach out to uh, alumni uh, or current students uh, and, and set up a mastermind group and use Zoom for free Zoom calls. You can use Zoom for free as long as it's less than 45 minutes and there's fewer than 100 people uh, in the Zoom chat. Yeah. Okay. And, and what I say to my students is that if you don't think you're getting at least a 10x return in the first 30 days of the program, the MBA program, please ask for a refund. Yeah. And to learn more, you can go to HaroonMBA.com. Yeah. Okay. And MBA stands for Married But Available. No? No, I'm just kidding. This never comes. I'm never getting divorced. Ever. Yeah. Okay. I am one stupid comment away from destroying everything I've built, but I don't care. I'm just going to be me. Okay. Okay. Uh, next question is from Andras. Who wrote, Can you explain VCs? Uh, do you have personal experience? Yeah, I worked in venture capital for years. Yeah, I invested in Facebook when it was a private company as well in my venture capital fund. Yeah. So the way that venture capital works is as follows. Let's say you start a company and you need a little bit of money. So you approach a rich dude who's a seed investor who gives you some money. Okay. And your company grows a bit. And you're like, okay, this is working. I want to scale this now. So what you do is you approach venture capital firms. And what they'll do, uh, and, and the ones here in the Bay Area, the one I talked about earlier today was Sequoia. I've partnered with them a couple of times on deals. I've also been on the board of a company at Sequoia, led the A round, we led the B round. So a firm like a Sequoia will lead the A round. That's the first round. They'll give you a bunch of money. And then a year or two later, if you run out of money, which is normal. Then you do the B round and another venture capital firm will invest. Then a year or two later, the C round, D round, et cetera. And then revenue growth is accelerating the whole time if you're doing well. And the second that revenue growth is positive, but decelerating, then what happens is the venture capital firms will call their investment banking friends and say, hey, can you take this company public? And that's how you harvest the investment. All right. Uh, and then uh, uh, last question I've, I've got here, and I'm going to wrap it up, is from Ted, who wrote, um, can an individual uh, investor buy leaps? I can't find them on my broker's website. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, let, let me show you. Yeah. So I'm going to pick a, a, a random ticker here. Let's go to, um, I don't want to use Edge. I want to use Chrome or Safari here. Okay. So finance at yahoo.com. They're just long dated calls. Okay. So for example, Tesla. Whoops. Let me try it again. Sorry. Tesla. <laughs> okay. Tesla. I am a GameStop. It looks like uh, Ryan Cohen just became CEO. It's a big deal. Activist investor. All right. So what you do is for any stock, if you click here on options and you see data, it means that there are options on this stock. And so uh, these things expire usually on Fridays. So we'll go here to, I don't know, 
two years from now. So January 16th, 2026, which is a Friday. And these are calls you can buy. These are leaps, meaning long dated um, uh, 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 options. Yeah. All right. Um, great. Okay. Uh, and the question is from Trader, how can I access Bloomberg GPT? I don't think it's commercially available for everybody yet. Um, I, I think that Bloomberg is going to launch a, a consumer version at some point as, as, as well. Let me actually check on that, see if there's been an update on that. Give me one second. Let's go. And I'm going to use Edge here. Bloomberg GPT. Okay. I remember they introduced it earlier this year. I don't think consumers can use it yet. How can I use Bloomberg GPT? And this stuff changes so fast, man. Okay. Yeah, only if you're a professional investor right now. So you have to subscribe. And I used to subscribe to, to Bloomberg Gears Go. I'd, I'd pay like, I don't know, two grand per, per analyst on my team, my company. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't think that there's a consumer product uh, yet. Yeah. And if anybody disagrees with me, uh, please let me know because I'd love to know. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, uh, Ralph wrote, what is the best platform to find high net worth individuals uh, for investments? It's hard. It's really, really tough. Um, I would network to find people that are affiliated with Band of Angels and other angel investment firms to see if you can get informational meetings uh, with them. Yeah. Yeah. Be careful with cap intro, though, because any firm that, that tells you, any firm that says, Hey, hire me and I'll help you raise money. It's usually bogus. Yeah. You have to network. It's a school of hard knocks. You got to get out there and, and pound the pavements and set up a bunch of informational meetings, leveraging your network and your secondary contacts uh, on LinkedIn. Yeah. Okay. All right, guys. So I'm going to wrap up this, this call. If you're in my, my, um, my silver MBA degree program, um, if you go to the first lecture uh, of, of the curriculum, I will see you all. Uh, for our weekly Zoom call at 10 a.m. today. Thank you, everybody, for your time. Uh, great to see Eileen and so many uh, friendly faces I haven't seen uh, for, for quite a while here. Uh, and uh, I'm going to end this call like I do with all my weeklies with a life-changing short interview with Steve Jobs that I licensed from the Silicon Valley Historical Association. Thank you, everybody, and God bless you. And I'll see you next week. When you grow up, you tend to get told that the world is the way it is and your, your life is just to live your life inside the world, try not to bash into the walls too much, uh, uh, try to have a nice family life, uh, have fun, save a little money. Um, but life, th that's a very limited life. Life can be much broader once you discover one simple fact, and that is everything around you that you call life was made up by people that were no smarter than you. And you can change it. You can influence it. You can, you can build your own things that other people can use. And the minute that you understand that you can poke life and actually something will, you know, if you push in, something will pop out the other side, that you can, you can change it, you can mold it, um, that's maybe the most important thing, is to shake off this, uh, th this, uh, erroneous notion that life is is there and you're just going to live in it versus embrace it change it improve it make your mark upon it um, I, I think that's very important and however you learn that once you learn it uh, you'll want to change life and make it better because it's kind of messed up in a lot of ways um, once you learn that you'll never be the same again <laughs>